are back at the Black Cat Club. It is the second Tuesday, and if it's the second Tuesday, you know where we will be, and where really you should be too. At the Black Cat, tonight's theme is Finish Him, stories about battles won and lost, and I am here with France. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so France, it's your first time, right? I've never done a story tell before. Yeah, this is the first time. I'm a storytelling story. virgin. You are. Yeah. I can tell it from your eyes. Yeah. Wait, so have you ever performed on stage at all doing other things? Nope. Really? My first time like in a kind of performance environment. Yeah. That's awesome. So what how did you get here tonight? Like what made you sign up? and pitch a story and show up tonight. Yeah, so I took one of Story District's uh, Storytelling 101 classes. Oh, you did, with Stephanie Good. and Joe, and it was an amazing experience. You guys do such a great job of teaching both the art and the science of storytelling. And uh, I actually missed the last class where you actually go up and you do a story tell. Oh. But Stephanie says your story would be a great match for one of our Tuesday storytelling sessions because it's about fighting. And I just go, wow, okay. And so I auditioned and got picked up. Fabulous. Okay, so how are you feeling? A bit nervous. I'll I'll be honest. <laughs> There's a and lot of people. I get nervous, and I've done it a lot, so I, it's completely understandable. Yeah. But here's the secret about nerves when you get on stage. It's actually way you like the nerves are way more intense before, and once you actually start, they lessen. I don't know why. Okay. Like they kind of go away. Maybe because your your brain is focused, but. I'll take your word for yeah. it. I hope it's true. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> Um, so, anything else, like, so were you surprised at all by the process or like the story that came, or just taking the class, did you expect that this is the story you'd end, end up with at the end of class? No, I actually started with a totally different story. Really? Yeah, and then it just wasn't working for me, and then I remember just kind of ditching it and then showing up to class and starting all over again, and Stephanie and Joe were like, oh, that's a great story, uh, that's much better, and so I think you guys do a great job of like, helping to understand not just how to tell a great story, but how to pick a great story. Yes, thank you. Yes, I think that's part of it, and that is one of the things we want people to learn. Yeah. And actually, like, it's so courageous, but it's really astute to be like, you know what, I'm gonna let this one go. But it can be hard, because you really, you might be super attached to the story, but yeah. it's, it's great when someone can walk away from a story that isn't working, so good for you. Because it got you here tonight. I'm super psyched to hear your story. And um, that's what we're going to do after this, actually. Stick around, because we're going to catch France when he gets up on stage. We're going to hear his whole story. And then we're going to talk to you afterward. OK. And see how you feel. Especially in between two siblings. Now I have two kids. Like, I try to step in all the time, make sure it doesn't happen. But like if the younger ones live, like, get on my nerves for a couple days, and I see the bullying happen. Come on, people. Come on, I let it go a little bit. Too much? No. Too much? Okay. Uh, so listen, we, we're going to go uh, into an intermission right after this one. We have one more storyteller to bring up before that, though. He's also a first-timer, also took the class. So I, I, I can't uh, say this enough for the ringing endorsement for the class. Uh, you're going to see how good he is, and you're going to want to take it. So give it up for France Huang. <laughs> So growing up, when the other kids liked to play cowboys and Indians, I preferred to play ninjas and samurais. <laughs> so perhaps it's not surprising that at the age of 29, I find myself outside of Tokyo, Japan, at a school of Japanese swordsmanship, waiting for my sword teacher to arrive. I'm what's called an uchi deshi. Uchi means house, deshi means student. I'm basically an apprentice to a Japanese master of the sword, who I respectfully refer to as Sensei. And I'm also really nervous. I've only been training about a year. I've been training mostly with another student named Paul. I've only met Sensei once before and never trained with him one on one. I've heard stories about Uchi Deshi literally being kicked out of their dojos on the first day if they displease their senseis. And I have this habit of making really stupid mistakes when I'm feeling stressed, like I'm feeling right now. <laughs> So over the last 24 hours, I've traveled 6,327 miles by plane, train, automobile, and bus to get to Sensei's school, which is called the dojo. Now, the dojo is a room about 20 feet by 40 feet. Every square inch of the walls is covered with traditional Japanese weapons. It's the middle of summer, there's no AC, the air is hot and muggy, 
Underneath my bare feet, I can feel the wooden floor of the dojo, worn smooth by hundreds of students after thousands of hours of training. And I look around, and in with me are two other Uchideshi, and they've been here for a lot longer, weeks, months. Suddenly, the door to the dojo opens. Sensei is here. He's a Japanese man in his 60s, five foot five. He feels about 10 feet tall to me. He's got a blue top on, black loose trousers. He walks in and a shaft of sunlight breaks through a window and hits him from behind. And it looks like he's glowing. And I search Sensei's face for any sign of welcome, any acknowledgement that he's happy down there, any, any indication that he's friendly. And there's nothing, not a zilch. It's just a blank expression. Sensei walks over to one of the walls and pulls down a joe, which is this wooden stick about four feet long. And he motions for me to stand in front of him. And so I get up and I stand in the middle of the dojo. And suddenly he swings the joe massively fast, finally fast on my feet, so I jump. And then continuing the arc, he swings at my head and so I duck. And then he does it again and again. And I'm, ju I'm jumping and ducking, and this continues for 30 minutes. <laughs> and after 30 minutes of jumping and ducking, I'm drenched in sweat, and my legs are on fire. And I look up at Sensei, hoping that at this point I've earned some small acknowledgement that I've pleased him, right? That I'm, I'm worthy of being an Ujideshi. Still nothing. Sensei instead returns to the wall, puts back the joe, and he brings down two wooden swords, and he hands me one. And we start what are called kata, which is what pattern sword drills are called. And at first it goes well, perhaps too well, because sensei decides to teach me a new kata. Now normally, learning a new kata is very involved. The kata gets explained to you, it gets demonstrated, it's broken down step by step, and the process could take hours, days, in some cases, even weeks. Sensei's method today is a little different. He just simply attacks me. And I have to defend myself, and that's how I'm going to learn the kata today. <laughs> and it's not going well because the sensei starts making sounds. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> After what feels like an eternity of disappointed grunting from sensei, he motions for me to sit down next to him. And so I do. And he turns to me, Francis, who's been teaching you? Um, sensei, Paul's been teaching me? <laughs> Paul is no teacher! At this point, I feel like I've dishonored Paul, I've dishonored myself, I've dishonored the school I came from, since he's gonna show me the door, he's probably gonna banish me from the island of Japan. So I'm pretty distracted. Sensei returns to the wall, puts back his sword, and he brings down a bow, which is a six foot long, one inch in diameter piece of wood. And I realized that we're about to do bow sword kata. Now, bow, bow sword kata are particularly dangerous for whoever's on the sword side because the bow is both a longer, heavier, and bigger weapon than the sword. And in this case, it's also being wielded by somebody who's better and faster. And so we start the kata, bow versus sword, me on the sword side, and I feel like I'm holding a shish kebab skewer and I'm being attacked <laughs> by a telephone pole. <laughs> Out of the corner of my eye, I notice alarm on the faces of the other Uchideshi. And that's when I realize that I'm zigging when I should be zagging, and Sensei is aiming a strike at my head, and instead of avoiding it or blocking it, I'm stepping directly into the path of his bow. The next thing I know, the bow strikes me right above my left eye, and two things happen next. First, my skull makes a sound on a scale of one to concussion is about an 11. <laughs> Second, I decide it's a good time to involuntarily inspect the floor of the dojo. And so I do that. <laughs> Sensei walks back to the wall calmly, again, not saying a word, puts the bow back and brings down a first aid kit. <laughs> As I groggily come to, I realize that I'm lying on the floor of the dojo, that Sensei is bandaging my head, and that I'm staring at a pool of my own B-positive blood, staining the beautiful floor of the dojo. And even in my half-catatonic state, I think to myself, well, if this is going to be my first, last, and only day as an Uchideshi, at least I've left my mark on the dojo. <laughs> I look up, and to my surprise, Sensei 
is smiling at me. And he's looking at me kindly for the first time all day. And he says, Francis? Uh, yes, Sensei? Tomorrow will be a better day. <laughs> tomorrow? Did, did Sensei say, just say tomorrow? Do, do I have brain damage? Well, it turns out I heard Sensei right. And there was a tomorrow. And a day after that, and a day after that, and a week after that, and a month after that, and it did get better. And eventually, years later, I actually became a sensei in my own right. And now I run a school in Silver Spring, Maryland, where I have 40 students and a dojo. But I still often think back to my first days in Uchideshi, to the mark it left on me, and to the mark I left on the dojo, <laughs> which is still there 20 years later. <laughs> Hey, hey, you did it. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my goodness. Harder or easier than karate? Oh, uh, well, no one was trying to attack me on stage, so I had more, <laughs> definitely more butterflies. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wait, was I right or wrong? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, Once good. you start, you get right into the story, and you get, um, you get this connection with the audience. Yeah. I've never done it, in, I've never performed in front of an audience before, and there's definitely like this energy, right? Like, you respond to them, they're responding to you, and it's yeah. so much fun. Yeah, that is what's fun, actually. Yeah. And it's such a nice audience, and that's why like, I always, I'm always testing, I'm like, oh, it's a warm audience. Yeah. And I don't know if, if the audience realizes just how much they give the performer just the energy and a reason to live. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but. Um, so, um, is your dojo on Georgia Avenue? Uh, it is uh, located on Selim Avenue. Okay, because yeah, I passed one. It's not past. It's not far from George Avenue up in Silver Spring. Okay, I was wondering if it was one I pass all the no. time. Anyway, so 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 you had a connection with the audience. Did you feel like you were going to forget anything? Were you worried about remembering? I was really worried about it. But once I got into, once I got up there, it just kind of all flowed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there awesome. Was, there was one spot where I was like, oh, I'm not going to know what to say. But then I just started telling the story. I mean, it just kind of took over. Yeah. yeah. I love the story, by the way. Thank you. And you did do a great job. And you look totally comfortable on stage. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you took the class, did the story, and were able to talk to us tonight. Well, thanks for having me. It was an awesome experience. I'd love to come back and do it again. I hope you do. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.